Hey, it's been a while since I made a new video and mainly because of a lack of ideas of key things to cover anyways I'm going to cover how to make and rig blinds and for demonstration purposes only I'm only going to make a four piece blind rig even though the process can be repeated for multiple pieces and I'm going to create a, a line with a smooth drag and a smooth whatever you call it smooth initial type and smooth drag type and this box I created only for reference of my blind dimensions and let's make some 4 inch slats uh, that sounds good and these are vertical lines and this will work for your other type of lines as well so don't just X out of it and watch the process to create these blinds I'm going to use a quick method and it's going to just I'm just going to create this line and then add a extrude modifier and let's fix up our scene right now we need to have our hierarchy set up so let's center this to our object and then center it to the pivot point now we don't need our reference object anymore let's add a extrude modifier and let's extrude this by 5 feet your value will vary and now let's create a top piece because if you look at some vertical blinds you notice that, they're, that they all have a top piece that keeps it together let's move our original piece to the zero zero position and now let's tweak our piece dimensions I'm going to go with the width of 0.125 inches and also let's put it up to our blind position or where our blind is and let's center it to the object so we can get this in the we can get it to midpoint where our what's it called our blind piece is and let's do a width of 0.125 inches and a height of let's go with 0.5 inches does that look okay 0.25 inches the other 0.75 will be for something else and let's make a copy of this and make it thinner by half or 0 0.0625 and this is going to be 0.125 inches no let's just leave it at 0.2 inches and let's subtract the second object we created to have something like this and it is very important and I cannot stress this enough in this case to have all your pieces uniform because one thing in real life all the pieces are uniform and second of all it will make the process much easier and that's what we want as you can see even though our circle isn't smooth and with a radius of 0.625 all the way we can fix this by increasing the segments but that's not too important because this is just the detail small detail and let's make the height 0.75 inches so overall this plus this is one inch if I'm not mistaken yes one inch here you go okay now let's 
do another pro boolean operation and change it this time change it from subtraction to union and let's connect our blind piece to this thing so now this thing controls our lines in any kind of motion that it does let's just give our line a little tweak I'm guessing we don't need a tweak it's at negative 2 and point 0.25 and yes our blind is perfectly oriented now let's see about this thing on the x about this extrude modifier we can easily collapse it to to finalize our object shape but if i do this i won't have any further control of my blind which is why i'm not going to collapse it and it will be useful if you ever want to make a slight change okay so that's the first part of our tutorial now let's get on to the rotation rig or Let's fix our pivot points. I'm going to fix my pivot points and make them at zero zeros. Now the pivot points are closer together. Okay. Quick fix. Now let's duplicate these pieces, and the reason I did that was so that. I can clone these and they're all in the same relative position. I just cloned it the wrong way. I'm going to redo that. Clone it as a reference. And now let's offset it on the x axis by 3 inches. Now let's do a quick test. I might make this four inches. Oops. I didn't have the offset mode transformation or the absolute input. Okay, so 4 inches might work better. Or 3.5 inches. yes let's leave it at 3.5 inches and now I'm going to repeat this process four times because that's as many that's as many operations as I'm willing to do by operations is by operations I mean the repeated process of linking the rotation and these things to my helper manipulator and let's just get it over with so let's create two of these and we're going to name the first one blind rotation open and the second one is going to be blind slide open
I'm going to rotate in this way because this is going to be my wall and that's going to be inside so if this was a window this would be the outside and this would be the inside and it'll make it easier in the what's it called as soon as we get to the rigging it's going to make it a lot easier but it's it's just a preference you don't have to do this it would work both ways I just I'm just going to do it this way okay so let's rig our first piece by creating a line under the spline object panel and make sure your spline is on the top of this and now let's remember I said earlier to make your pieces uniform and if you did what I did they are uniform and if you see my object width it's 0.125 inches which means that I need to offset this vertex by half of it if you did one inch it could be negative 0.5 but for me it's negative 0 0.0625 because that is half of 0 0.125 so let's go back to our line or line and offset it by negative 0 0.0625 using the absolute transform again negative 0 0.0625 inches not feet I forgot to add the little inches thing and also offset the other one by negative 0 0.0625 inches and now here's the fun part click on your this is going to be the blind slide open okay before we do that let's just get the blind rotation open over with and let's get the blind rotation thing over with and let's select your blind rotation slider which you create under the helper and manipulators go to animation wire parameters parameters wire dialog and see this is slider 001 you can name it what you want in this thing you can rename, rename it so you don't get confused so you don't get confused in the parameter wiring and this name is different from this name so remember that and these names are important in the max group but we're not getting into max group we don't need it so let's select our blind rotation and make sure it's value so so make sure we're adjust we're making the value tweak this thing so highlight value and find your object and the first one is box 01 and we're going to affect this object's rotation on the z axis connect and turn on the select and manipulate so you can see and that's that's all you need to do for the rotation under the wire parameters the next thing we need to do is tweak our minimum minimum and maximum value so I'm going to do a minimum 1.5 and a maximum 1.5 and lower your snap value and the lower the snap value is the more precise your snaps will be or the smoother your rotations will be so check it out now this is going to be this is going to be affected by personal preference press F4 if you can't see it because 
After all, this thing is a single thin object. Technically a plane, just with a little curvature. And I can tell that negative 1.5 and 1.5 is going to be too much, so... one point two let's do one point two one point two looks better let's do one point three and that looks better find a value you like and make sure they're the same Now let's do the other piece, and the other piece is the same thing. Let's go to animation, wire parameters, wire dialog, blind rotation open, object value, and find your next piece. And my next piece is box 02. And we're going to affect this object's rotation on, this, on the Z axis hit that button one-way connection this one will make if I use this one it's going to make my objects rotation on the Z on the Z axis affect my slider and we don't want that we just want my slider to affect my objects so hit connect and your things are connected now and repeat the process Band rotation open all five shortcut connect the value to the object my next object is box zero three we're going to affect this object's rotation on the z-axis one-way connection connect update the next object is box zero four but we already knew that it's the only one left and I'm sure your blind has more pieces so you will have to do this a lot more and make sure it's on rotation and not position one way connection connect that's it we just finish our slider our slider that affects our blind piece rotations and let's leave this at zero because we need to snap to our objects and by having them at zero it's going to be a lot easier and I'm going to offset this by negative point one twenty five negative 0.125 inches because or I'm going to offset it by that because this is going to be my sled that doesn't move so if you look at your blind when you close them or open them this one barely moves at all and all of these are going to collapse to it and this thing right here is going to hit this thing so since they're all uniform it would be for example this little half hitting this half so yeah that's the reason for the offsets let's go to our object and go to animation did I do it already? nope I didn't so select your pivot point object thing and go to animation constraint path constraint and link it to this line delete your selected keys select all the keys which it only makes two and delete them turn off loop and you're done all the other values leave them as they are and now select your blind style open and go to wire parameters let's use our shortcuts all five 
and please get used to the shortcuts because it's going to save you a lot of time and now under the object value we're going to go to our box 02 and we're going to affect this transform position on the x-axis make sure it's under the path constraint percent linear float one-way connection connect and what this one affects it basically just changes the percent along path and on this one our maximum value is going to be one do not argue don't even tweak it it's going to be one because one is going to be at the end and two is going to make it go twice as fast three three times as fast I don't know something like that and now let's do the other one and to do the other one let's send this one to this end and just slide your line a little bit as a copy or instance it doesn't matter but I would prefer copying and also let's offset this by negative point zero six two five point zero six two five and again if you just skip through this the value I did is half of this thing because they join up at each other's ends and now let's repeat the process animation constraint path constraint delete your keyframes make sure you delete them because if you don't your animation is going to automatically play then again I don't know if it will play I will assume it will do that it will do it automatically without this thing's actions but I don't know about that so anyways now select your slider, the next box is box 03 so select your slider, press Alt 5, get used to it value B0 float and what is it, box 03 and we're going to affect, affect box 03 position on the x-axis using a path constraint and now let's duplicate the line snap to this point and now get the other one send your things all the way to the other side so you know where they end I'll say by half of the distance between the objects minus point zero six two five I'm just putting emphasis on what you need to do and offset this one by 0 0.0625 okay now animation constraint path constraint link it to your created line delete the keyframes and go to animation well hold on it's box 04 so press all five remember it'll save you time link box 04 position on the half constraint linear code hit connect and we're done we have a working rig and you will have to do, repeat this process as many times as you have blinds and pieces and the reason I s decided to rig these blinds was because I was making some blinds for an architectural scene and decided to animate them and 
when I tried animating them manually within five minutes I realized that it was pointless so I went to the max options and created a new scene and started working on a blind model and to finish this off let's say that for example that thing is your that thing is your what's it called uh, this thing is the bar that everything else connects to make sure you link whatever object you didn't link because remember like I said usually this line this line doesn't move it just stays in its place I will link this thing to it and I will link all the other spines to this thing because these things are linked to the spline so we don't need to rotate it and do not rotate it because you get this weird orientation that I just showed you you don't need to rotate it the only thing this thing serves is a is as a, is as a method of being able to move it on the X Y or Z axis for while hanging purposes and that's all you need this thing for it'll keep your pieces in place and that concludes the tutorial I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you learned something and I hope it is exactly what you are looking for I looked for a tutorial similar to this to see if someone else created it and no one else created it so I made it so next time you're going to take a trip to some 3d model vendor remember that now you can create your own blinds and you don't have to cough up or pay up five six dollars per model because of the type of license such as one time use or commercial license and what troubles me is that this tutorial is going to be a key for a person that I'm not going to name that will be able to quickly do a simple process and well you know automate it and that's what I don't like and it would be bad if someone actually made a automation tool to take the time out of this because it's very easy and he'll probably overcharge so anyways you saw it here first and have a nice day